When flying a model sailplane, the occurrence of a stall can be a frustrating pilot error which costs altitude, flight time, and can risk a crash. A wing stall happens to all aircraft when the boundary layer of airflow separates from the wing surface, a condition achieved by very high angle of attack or very high airspeed. While all aircraft will stall, management of the separated airflow can minimize loss of control and altitude during stall. In this video, I'll test one idea which may be effective in improving stall recovery. But first, let's see what wing stall actually looks like in a two-dimensional flow field. The airflow separates because after it accelerates around the wing's leading edge, it has too much inertia to follow the rest of the curvature. This creates a turbulent vortex of flow reversal on either side of which are stagnation points where the airflow doesn't know which way to go. And when we quantify the lift-to-drag ratio at this angle of attack, we can see that it's less than 2, which is extremely low considering that this is quite an efficient airfoil and could probably do 15 or 20 at the proper angle of incidence. So what about birds? Well, they have a secret for flying at high angles of attack, and it lies in the small covert feathers on their inner wing. As you can see, the extreme low pressure on top of this hawk's wing pulls the covert feathers upwards where the separated flow can reattach and stabilize the wing. Note that no covert feathers are needed at the wingtips because the wingtips have this negative twist that puts them at a lower angle of attack. Now when we look at a different bird, a red kite, as it swoops down to scavenge in a parking lot, we see much the same thing. It is notable here that because a swooping maneuver is often used to grab prey animals, the bird actually has to be able to produce extra lift in this case. This means that when an airplane would be totally stalled out, the red kite is actually at its maximal lift production. And now again from this angle we can see that helical twist which sets the wingtip at a lower angle of attack, devoid of flow separation. And now it's this idea of flow stabilizing feathers which I intend to replicate with my glider. So considering all these notions of feathers along the leading edge to reduce flow separation and um, to stabilize the boundary layer, I've built myself a very simple uh, test bed sort of glider. You can even see it's got the old tissue covering from the old glider I had these wings on. I really just threw this together the other day. So. Um, I'm just going to give it some test flights now. We'll do some stall tests, see how it tip stalls, see what the slow flight characteristics are, high speed characteristics, we'll see what the average glide ratio is. We'll just have a look at all these characteristics and then I'll put some, some pseudo feathers, some, some compliant elements along the leading edge of the wing to hopefully stabilize that boundary layer so we'll come back tomorrow and give it a flight with the feathers. But for now we'll just try the, the flat plate wing and I've already tested the glide so I'll give it a toss. Stall test. Yeah, as you can see, it gets into fugoid oscillations where it stalls softly and then progressively more and more um, drastically. So. We'll see if these if these movable leading edge elements can can soften that stall. Interestingly, it, it seems to not want to tip stall. It really does keep flying straight even when I stall it. Have a look one more time, try to really tip stall this thing, see if it'll do it. It's funny, it really does not want to tip stall, so I guess we won't be able to see any improvements in that characteristic that won't even do it. Having seen the unaugmented flight performance, I then set about making some little covert feathery things to go on the leading edge of the wing. I first had a look at the shape of one of my standard run-of-the-mill discus launch glider wings and thought of a bird whose wings are similar in shape, size, and function, the herring gull, an aerodynamic, maneuverable, and efficient soaring bird. Now as we watch the gull maneuver, we can see that its covert feathers ruffle less drastically than those of the raptors. The covert feather motion here is less concentrated, it's more span-wise, and slightly further back from the leading edge of the wing. 
Looking at a wing diagram, we see that the rows of coverts, which ruffle in flight, take up about 35% of the total cord at the wing root. And with that info, I went about making some pseudo feathers for my glider. I first took the wax paper backing from some park light covering film and folded it in half a few times so I could cut many relatively similar feather shapes with only one cut. I then decided that my feather length should be two inches. This is actually slightly more than the proportional length based on the seagull. I figured my feathers would have to be a little longer because the glider does not experience such high angles of attack or such turbulent flow as a seagull, and thus the glider's lower pressure gradient would need more leverage to raise the feathers. I then noted that a blunt form in fluid flow induces greater flow separation in turbulence than a tapered form which naturally approaches the cut condition at the trailing edge, so I cut my feathers with a rounded tip each. They're roughly cut, but if the concept is going to work at all, then this should be enough to at least see some effect. And so thinking, I used some medium viscosity CA glue and mounted the feathers to the leading edge of the wing. I then sanded the front edge of the wax paper down flush with the leading edge to lower the drag, and the feathers were all done, so it was time to head out to the field and see if there was any improvement. Ah, now there was a good view of the feathers functioning as intended. Let's watch that again. As you can see, the feathers are responding to changes in incidence and thereby in pressure gradient. However, they are also responding to crosswinds, thermal activity, and their own tendency to stay at rest when the sink rate increases. This is clearly suboptimal and could probably be improved by having a thicker airfoil for a higher pressure gradient and stiffer feathers which only that higher pressure gradient could actuate. In any case, as you've been seeing, the feathers are definitely doing their job. The wind got it. Yeah, this, this glides noticeably better than it did before. This is kind of cool. Oh yeah, that was kind of cool. In fact, this whole experiment has been kind of cool. Now, I would be interested to see how these qualities could be made better still by use of more articulated and precisely designed feathers. I mean, various configurations of feathers may offer further improvement, and in fact, the very process of optimizing a feather seems intriguing. Okay, but that's enough said for now. I have no more time for experimenting this week because I've got some editing and uploading to do. So, I leave you with the closing remark that without a doubt, this was a successful and fun aerodynamic experiment. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching!